All right, party people, hope that everyone is good and surviving the misery of lockdown part two. But to brighten your day, Colour Fit is back for series two. And boy, we are back with a bang with performance legend Martin Bashite on the show. Martin CV leaves you feeling absolutely pathetic. He has three master's degrees and a PhD and over 170 publications. He's the founder and co-editor of the Sports Performance Science Reports, which is an incredible, practically focused and free performance resource. Professionally, he was head of physiology at the world-renowned Aspire Academy and head of performance at footballing giants Paris Saint-Germain, and he's currently head of performance at Kitman Labs. Finally, Martin is a co-founder of HIT Science, a course and book aimed at improving our understanding of HIT for performance in elite sports, and that is going to be the focus of our chat today. It is an absolute honour to have Martin on the show and do not waste this opportunity to interact with one of the giants of sports science in our generation. And he's a top fella to boot. Enjoy. Hi Tom. Uh, first of all, thanks for the invite. I've been really enjoying so far all the, the content that you've been putting in, into this uh, channel. So really happy and proud to be, to be involved uh, as well. Um, so when you ask me first question, what's, what's new and what's happening at the moment for me? So, I would say uh, there's been a lot of change. Um, so not being involved uh, anymore in a, in a football club on a daily basis has allowed me to refocus and put my, my energy in brain, brain space and in other projects. So I'm obviously still keep on moving and yeah, again, putting a lot of energy into our heat science uh, project that I'll, I'll be more precise, more, give me more details uh, later. Um, I have now started uh, as a, um, a new position with Kitman Lab as the head of uh, performance intelligence uh, research. And uh, I'm working on the side of that on a very, very personal project that I have here very, very, very deep about, I can't, cannot say too, too, too much about title and, and time frames, but it's about um, working as a practitioner in this elite environment. And it talks a lot about ego, about team culture and how we can work work together, do a better job and f f more importantly, be, be happy in, in, the, in this context. So a lot of things uh, going on, uh, but overall super excited to keep having this hopefully uh, approach of just trying to give, uh, to give, give away, share, uh, what I could with a common and central point, which is around um, yeah, helping others, trying to trying to feel helpful, trying to have an impact, uh, but keeping this mind of taking the selfishness uh, as far away as we can. And if if everything has to to have an uh, an objective and an end, is about just uh, making sure uh, everything I do can be helpful for for others. A bit more specific about heat science now. Um, you know, I think everything which we've been doing so far in heat science is trying to bring out the, the idea of, for a practitioner, and especially if you end up working with different people at the same time, it's always more useful and probably more relevant, impactful to figure out, to figure out first what is the actual, what we call the type of a session, what are the physiological targets that we are looking for in terms of aerobic load, anaerobic load, or the neuromuscular load, let's say as well, before thinking about the format, which is actually the, the, the actual work that is performed. So for example, when it comes to implementing a session for substitutes the day after a game, what are we looking for first in terms of the physiology? Probably give them a load to compensate uh, the, the load of the, the match they, they, they missed. But how what's the optimal load for, for those guys? There probably need to be some high speed running because that's something obviously they get, especially when they play and less when they train. They probably need some kind of um, important mechanical work as well, which also happens a lot in games. And there are obviously some, some formats that allows to tick those boxes, those boxes more than others. So if we were to choose um, like a short interval training format, for example, like a 15, 15 or 10, 20, we'll have to make sure that the, the runs, the courses will involve both some high speed running and a lot of general direction, axle, diesel, so that we can match a portion at least of what I would have had if, if that played. But conversely, if you were to train an athlete that is just coming back from an injury, you probably don't want to overload the neuromuscular system and you probably don't want to have this kind of 
this amount of high speed running and mechanical work. And in this case, you might still use the same short intervals, 15, 15 or 10, 20, but you just may change the actual, the actual run patterns again to match those objectives. So again, way more important to get the types first. What are we looking for? And only afterwards implement the actual um, training sequences and those formats. And with the heat science, we keep on trying to, 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 to develop uh, the overall project, let's say, um, which goes through uh, the translation of both the book and the course into Spanish uh, and Chinese. Try to keep uh, moving, expanding, updating the content of the course, getting through the example of the application in new sports. Um, we're starting some new partnerships with, uh, with the industry. Uh, like uh, we have now a research uh, collaboration with a player maker about better understanding the acute neuromuscular responses to, to hit sessions, to hit formats, to hit, to hit sequences, um, partnership with, uh, with universities. But overall, the idea is to keep uh, pushing, expanding our understanding of both what is the best efficient, what are the, the, the best ways to, to program heat and hopefully keep on improving uh, the practice at the, at the field level. And when we go a bit deeper than just this example of high intensity training programming, but we think about the overall planning that has to be made at the team level, when you think about different content, those that happen uh, before training, after training, the conditioning work, the gym work, everything that is around the technical and tactical aspects that on the top involves uh, many practitioners, like in a multidisciplinary team, uh, there are probably a lot of steps that can still be anticipated to improve uh, the programming aspect of a given session uh, every day. So I like to break those levels, at least to break this, this approach at four levels, which the first being uh, the microcycle structure. So how many days do we have uh, between, between games? Um, as if you have kind of the first skeleton of the microcycle that gives you the, the, pat the loading pattern of the week. From this loading pattern, you know more or less which day you're going to be able to have a higher load, which day you're going to focus on a given, a more, more on a, on a given tactical aspect, physical aspect, and so on, if you kind of enjoy the, the horizontal alternance of, um, of training, uh, which is something I've been always believing a, a lot. Um, then the second level will be at the group level, ma mainly based on who played, who did not play the last game. So the, the first couple of days after the game, you have to adjust the load based on that. The third level will be at the player level, based on weaknesses, strengths, if you have to have something specific to their program, a history of injuries, and, and so on, age. And the fourth level might be related to everything you, you can't really control, but you still have to account for which is the load that occurred during a session, during a game, and all the responses to that load using a typical monitoring system, could be wellness or in any other technical measures. And to be a bit more pragmatic when it comes to putting together all these uh, levels and steps of, of, of planning or programming, um, there's definitely at some stage uh, the need for, for a system that allows First of all, to, for everyone to connect so that everyone can seize and plan together and share the information. So on both sharing the information and collecting this information. And this is when uh, softwares and like, uh, like Kitman uh, among others, but working, working for Kitman, I still believe now this is the, the most uh, complete software solution that helps to put those data uh, together so that we can really extract the information and practitioner can, can plan accordingly. But the best part of, of what Kitman offers at the moment as well, it's also our ability to help customers to solve their own uh, questions. So when those data or some data are already in a system and we can look at this, this, this data for them and try to answer and to give them feedbacks on what's happening with, with, with their data is great, but we can also imagine that we make a plan and let's decide together to make more uh, measurements, to collect more data if it's possible in their context so that we have more information 
that we can uh, analyze and come back to help them to be more successful in, in their own context. And this overall approach of having kind of a, a remote research and development department that can just um, attach itself and, and help clubs and practitioners to be more mindful about the decision is uh, something that I think I've been passionate about uh, for, for, for forever almost. Um, link to that, uh, I'm linking to the, to, to the video, uh, a link for a quick survey and anyone, anyone willing, be, willing to be involved and help us to redefine uh, fu future research questions is obviously welcome and I'll, I'll, I'll be thankful for, for your help as well. And to, to finish off the, the one billion dollar question about what advice I would give to my younger self. Um, I think the, the, the stuff that I'm happy I, I kept and I've done about just keeping the, the passion and the energy that everything I could put in, 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 in my work and these efforts, because I think never, it never really felt like I was working hard or whatever, because I just love to do, to do what I, what, what I've been doing. So this is, I think that the hardest part is to find what we really like and enjoy doing and then it just 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 a straight road so um on the other side i should have probably been more patient be more aware that uh the world doesn't go your way and you have to adapt yourself you have to understand and that you go to find other ways so you have to, just to accept that people might not uh be willing to think the way you do the, the way you want and that that's that's fine you know so i think accepting uh, earlier that we're not not the same accepting earlier that you can't change people and understanding earlier that as long as you believe in what you do and yourself that's the most important you know so about uh, there are people like and i'm this kind of people i always thought that we will all have a common goal that we would all be able to see the global picture that we will all be able to collaborate uh, but that's that's not that's not true actually so uh, we just have to admit that and still find where we can have this impact where do we can still be happy and enjoy the the, the path and probably focus more on enjoying the path than looking at the summit as as the end goal um, because once, if you reach it, then, then what's left, you know? So making sure we really, really enjoy every, every single day and uh, hopefully I'm still on, on that track at the, at the moment. So thanks to Mike there for an absolute top show. As I mentioned, he's a busy boy and he first expanded upon Hit Science, which is a course and book that helps you apply the most suitable endurance training methods based upon periodization considerations. And in particular, the microcycle competition structures specific sub population considerations such as starters and non-starters and individual considerations such as age previous injury and strength and weaknesses the course is constantly updated and is now multilingual and has aligned with player tech to help complete the loop between monitoring and appropriate training mine highlight the importance of cohesion and knowledge sharing between various performance departments and it's because of this reasons he joined kitman labs he offered the chance to pose performance questions which will be linked on the conclusion tweet so don't miss out on this opportunity martin advised that we focus on what we love so maintaining passion is effortless even as a world-renowned expert, there are going to be times when we have to work with people that are not aligned with exactly as we are. So we have to adapt our beliefs to ensure that we still have an impact. Really hope you enjoy the show. You can catch the full episode on the Colourfit podcast and YouTube, and I hope to catch you next week.